internet to bring you the ultimate in life hacks, bonkers inventions and crazy contraptions designed to make your life easier, more exciting and definitely more fun. And we've summoned a team of experts with science brains and funny bones to explain everything. From the ridiculous to the sublime. And make sure you strap in for the grand finale at our very own Hack HQ, where we create and construct an epic stunt, our very own super-sized solutions to life's problems, big and small. With the help of Mike Sansom, pyrotechnician, chemist and engineer, and his human guinea pigs, Marcus Bronzy and Stephen Grant. For now, sit back, relax and put your feet up. Let us do the hard work so you don't have to. This is how hacks work. Our sport, that great pursuit that unites people around the world. We're harnessing your physical and mental prowess is all it takes to emerge victorious. But if you don't have either of those qualities, here at How Hacks Work, we're going to show you how to get one step ahead of the competition with some very clever tips. Next time I go swimming, I'm not going to take a towel. I'm just going to take a big bag of cat litter. From ping pong ball repair to a plastic pleasure cruise. And a clever way to keep your favourite soundtrack running while you're running. And in our epic hack, Mike is going to show us how to get a table tennis serve even Roger Federer will be envious of. Well, I'll tell you what, Mike, that was a sick sports hack. Beat the world's first football crossbow. <laughs> no, this isn't Wayne Rooney putting on an accent. It's a German telling us how to succeed at football using a giant crossbow. Carry on. If nothing else, having a 10-foot-long crossbow end at you from 12 yards will probably strike fear into any goalie. The perfect hit. You see, this is why Germans are so good at penalty shootouts. It's also pretty handy if you happen to disagree with the ref. Goal! <laughs> More people would watch football if these were legal. You draw back that elastic and you're storing energy. And as soon as you release it, that energy is converted straight back into kinetic or movement energy, which throws the ball off towards the goal. There are various ways to score the perfect goal, but scientists say they've come up with a formula to do it properly. Kick the ball into the back of the net. It all depends on a number of factors, but mainly the size of the ball, the distance from the goal, and the density of the air. But if you get it right, you can produce the perfect free kick that's going to beat any goalkeeper every time. In football, you have to take every advantage you can get. And this is a massive one. A sensationally striking hack hit. If you think boats are rubbish, then this next clip will prove you right. You definitely need plenty of bottle if you're planning to win any races in this vessel in both senses. An object will float if it weighs less than the total amount of water that it displaces. This is how really heavy boats are able to float, because they displace a lot of water. In contrast, a small stone weighs a lot, but it doesn't displace very much water, so it will sink. Environmentally speaking, aren't we supposed to stop throwing plastic bottles into the rivers and seas? Plastic waste is a massive problem around the world. In fact, one truckload of waste gets put in the seas every minute. It might not float your boat, but this eco-friendly rowboat is a hit for the environment. Want to keep fit and look tough? Well, this next hat flips the traditional boxing glove on its head. Some cheap thongs. For any non-Aussie viewers, thongs means flip-flops. One doesn't make a different sound to the other, so I've always thought they should be called flip-flips or flop-flops. These flip-flops are made of a spongy, rubber, foam material. Inside the flip-flops, you've got lots of tiny little air bubbles. And when the flip-flops get compressed, these air bubbles get compressed as well. That's what makes it feel spongy. A professional boxer can produce around 400 kilos of force in a, in a really powerful punch. But it's not necessarily all about the force that you hit someone with that's going to knock them out. It's about where you hit them and how you hit them. 
But what is it about this well-aimed flip-flop that packs enough of a punch to leave you out for the count? The brain is a very fragile, big jelly-like mass of blood vessels, nerves and soft tissue. When your head suffers a large impact, such as a knockout punch, it stops moving fairly quickly, but your brain doesn't. And as your brain knocks around inside your skull, your nerves randomly fire huge numbers of electrical signals, which cause a sensory overload. Your brain can't handle the vast amount of confusing information and closes for business, ready to reboot when things have calmed down a bit. Let's face it though, there'd be nothing more embarrassing than getting knocked out by a beach shoe. So this has to be a flip, flop. If you're so sports crazy that one on its own isn't enough for you, then this next video will give you some extreme inspiration. This guy's volleying a hockey ball whilst wakeboarding. I can't even iron and watch the telly at the same time. If you combine two sports that are a little bit boring on their own, then it makes it a much more exciting sport. Like you could have football combined with figure skating, because I'd definitely like to see Wayne Rooney in a leotard. Let's face it, Juliet, who wouldn't? It only takes 200 milliseconds for your eyes to see something, send the signal to your brain, and your brain to send that signal back out to, say, your hands if you're hitting a tennis ball or, yeah, moving a hockey ball. The bit of our brain that works out where something is is actually a lot faster than the bit that works out what it is. So sometimes we can react to something before we even know what that thing is. What about the bit of the brain that works out what you just said? Practice makes perfect in this extreme aquatic sports multitasker and the results won't fail to impress. A hydro hockey hack hit! Coming up at Hack HQ with the help of his trusty guinea pig Marcus, Mike is going to show us how to send a certain sport into the stratosphere with a supersonic serving hack. New balls, please. So far, we've shown you an environmentally friendly way to get into rowing and a way to use your footwear to get fighting fit. But stay tuned, because coming up, we'll be showing you a salivating soccer hack for vegetable fans and a music hack to keep your tunes going that extra mile. If competing on the ocean waves is your dream, but your budget is more pond-sized, then this boat trip will have you sailing across the finish line in no time. If nothing else, this video proves sailing doesn't always have to be glamorous. Usually you can sail faster if the sail is about 70 to 80 degrees to the wind rather than the wind being directly behind you. This is because you can trim the sails to make the wind flow over them to create lift in much in the same way as an aircraft wing does. And in this way you can make your boat go faster. Sadly not as fast as an actual aeroplane though, hey Anna? Windy weather is caused by differentials in air pressure. So air likes to go from an area of high pressure to an area of low pressure and it does that in the form of wind. This money-saving maritime tip makes this water sport accessible to everyone. A high seas hack hit. If winter sports are your thing, but you don't live in Alaska, then all you need is a 4x4, a rope, and plenty of guts to help you sled all year round. And if all that sounds like a bit of a drag, that's because it is. There's not much snow where, where I live, and even if it did, there aren't that many hills either, so I don't get to sledge very often. This changes all of that, so I am well up for a bit of summertime sledging. This is not new. Me and my dad were doing this in my back garden when I was about six years old. Centrifugal forces are acting on both the man and the sled. This makes them feel a force outwards, and that means that sometimes the man will fall off the sled. This sledder's only weapon against being thrown off is balance. But how does it work? Deep inside your ear lies three semicircular canals of fluid known as a vestibular labyrinth. Each canal is angled to deal with either tilting the head left and right, shaking it side to side, or nodding up and down. As the head moves, the liquid in these canals moves in the direction of the motion. At the entrance to the canals, there are tiny hair-like cells that are moved by the liquid and transmit details of the movement to the brain via electrical signals. It's the constant feedback from the ear to the brain that tells us whether we're up and on top or down and out. 
But if finding your balance isn't your strong suit, just make sure finding the right friend is. If his mates would slow down in the Land Rover, that would help him as well. But it doesn't seem to me that they do that very often. I think they quite enjoy the bits when he goes flying off the side. Whether you live in Belarus or the Bahamas, this sporty sledging hack means you can get into the winter spirit no matter what the weather. A frosty hack hit. Football is one of the most popular sports in the world. But what if you can't get your hands on a ball? No problem, just get down to a farmer's market and pick up a pumpkin. This guy is the Ronaldo of seasonal veg soccer. If he takes his eyes off this ball though, he could end up messy. This is one frighteningly good way of avoiding waste at Halloween. I'll tell you one thing, I wouldn't fancy heading that thing from a corner kick. This clip is about 15 seconds long, which is roughly how long a pumpkin would actually last if you used it as a football. The jury's out on whether this pumpkin makes it to the ball. Over at Hack HQ, Mike is about to show us how to serve a ping pong ball faster than Roger Federer with the aid of a humble vacuum. Uh, when they said we'd be doing a sporting act, I thought a couple of rounds of sparring in the gym or pumping some iron, but ping pong? Yeah, don't underestimate the power of a ping pong ball. I'm going to use the power of nothing, a vacuum, to propel a ping pong ball at stupid speeds. So a vacuum is nothing, it's space. If there's nothing in it, it's a vacuum. You suck all of the air out of something, that's a vacuum. Sounds like one of my dinner parties. Let me show you, I've got a vacuum tank here. You know what a balloon is, right? Definitely blow blow that, that up a bit. God, no, well, this is my workout then, I guess. <laughs> That'll do. Like that, yeah? Yeah, now tie knot. Great. So I'm going to pop it in the vacuum chamber. All right. Just there. Stick the lid on. Right, if you hit the vacuum, which is that switch there, just turn it. Just turn this switch here. Yep. And that starts our vacuum pump. OK. Now, at the moment, we've got the vacuum pump linked all the way up to this, this chamber. What's happening is I'm pulling out all of the air from inside this tank right. with the vacuum pump. And if you look, right. it is really getting bigger in there, that balloon. Yeah, it's definitely getting bigger. So what's actually going on inside the tank? So the balloon's filling up the space of the vacuum. So those air molecules inside the balloon are getting bigger and bigger. They're getting further apart from each other. OK, so let me get this right. The lower the pressure in this tank, the more the balloon is trying to fill the atmosphere exactly. that there is less of. Yeah. This guinea pig catches on fast. Can we let it out now? Yeah, go for it. What, 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 this one? Yep. Ah. Oh, look at it go. All right, that was cute. Still don't know what this has to do with sports hacks, though. Funnily enough, I was thinking exactly the same thing. Well, that's where we come into ping pong. Oh, yeah. yeah? Yeah. Stick that in the end of the tube. Right. We need to close off the ends of the tube and make a perfect vacuum. Right. And I do this with a bit of sticky tape. OK. What, just, that's just regular sticky tape? Regular tape. No expense spared on this show. So I'm going to suck all the air out of this tube. The ping pong ball is about there. To fire it, mm -hmm. all we have to do is pierce the end of the tube. As soon as you pierce that, all of the air is going to rush from our atmosphere, filling up that vacuum to equalise, sending that ball flying forwards. Are you ready for it? I really want to do this. OK. <laughs> hmm, not 100% convinced, Marcus. Pop on your safety glasses. All right, safety first. Ready? Yep, yep. You can hear that sticky tape getting tighter and tighter. All you have to do, pierce the cell tape down this end with the scissors. All right, let's do this. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> Look at that! Wicked, look, you've actually managed to make a hole in the box with a ping pong ball. Sensei Mike, I'm impressed. You have truly used the power of nothing to do something. A great sports hack. Good, but I can do better. Really? Oh, yeah. Oh, can you now, Mike? Well, then we'll definitely be back later on to see if Mike can put his money where his mouth is with his epic sports hack. So far, we've seen a snowless solution for turning sledding into a year-round sport and two sports in one to create hockey boarding. You heard it here first. Still to come, we've got a sweet smelling hack to help you spruce up your sports pumps and a table tennis tip to restore your damaged balls to their former glory. But first, no sporting activity is complete without some motivational music. But how can you keep those earphones where they belong while you're going out for your personal best? 
The answer is very inexpensively. Who wants to spend money on snazzy ergonomic headphones when you can simply wrap a twist tie around the bottom of your earphone, loop it over your ear and, well, that's it. Simple, eh? Running is thought to be an extremely helpful exercise. It can improve your mood and general feeling of well-being. But a recent study of about 55,000 people found that it can actually increase your lifespan by about three years, which is a pretty amazing statistic. I don't wear headphones when I'm running because I find the voices in my head are quite enough to keep me company. Even they must get bored of you too, though, George. As with any sound, headphones have to make the air around them vibrate, and it's this vibration that goes to your inner ear and transmits a signal to your brain. This brainy shortcut means your sport pursuits will always have the most epic soundtracks. A heart racing hack hit! The worst thing about sports, hands down, is how disgusting your shoes smell after all that running around. This next hack is so good at eliminating odours, it will have you purring in delight. Simply pour some cat litter into a sock, stuff that into your trainers and leave for a few hours. The reason your feet swell is not from the sweat itself, it's from the byproducts the bacteria use up as they eat the contents of your sweat. They excrete these volatile chemicals, which are particularly stinky and cheesy. Just one more reason for me not to exercise. Thanks, Chris. Next time uh, I go swimming, I'm not going to take a towel. I'm just going to take a big bag of cat litter, empty it onto the floor uh, and roll around in that to dry myself. But it won't be weird because I'll be dressed in my cat swimming costume. Disturbing mental images of George aside, this ingenious aroma hack is the perfect tip for you sweaty sports stars out there. A hygienic hack hit. From foot pong to ping pong now, as we hack the noble sport of table tennis. Here's how to keep those balls in shape at your next tournament. You've been playing ping pong, someone gives it a slam and you get a big ding in the ball like that. How do you fix it? Easy. Get some hot water from the kettle, pour it into a glass, put your ball in the water, push it under with a pair of scissors, like this, wait five seconds, and bingo! Please note this only works with ping pong balls. This hack works because the air inside the ping pong ball is expanding because it's getting hotter. I wish I could use this life hack for my cellulite. Just get into a hot bath and pop. Just have smooth, peachy, round skin again. That'd be lovely. This tip-top ping pong ball repair hack is perfect for the over-enthusiastic table tennis competitor. A healing hack hit. Over to Hack HQ. The countdown is over and the fuses are lit. There's no cannon too big, no dynamite too strong for Mike to handle. And with his trusted guinea pig, Marcus, he'll try anything so that you don't have to. Earlier, Mike, with the help of Marcus, was using science to take his ping pong serve to new supersonic heights. Now let's rejoin Mike for our epic hack as he puts that theory into practice and see whether he's managed to add some extra punch to this humble ball game. What on earth are you up to now? So what's going on here, Mike? Right, like what we did in the workshop, all right, all right. this is a much, much bigger version. OK. Yeah? So we caused the vacuum in the tube, mm -hmm. pierced the tube, and that shot the ping pong ball out. Right. This one, we're doing it slightly differently. So we're not using the atmosphere around us. We're going to make our own air pressure in this cylinder here. Right. That's going to come from a compressor. We're going to feed that in, and we're going to have the same tape either end. When the tape breaks, it's going to rush on through, all of that compressed there, firing our ping pong ball at supersonic speeds. OK, so this is a supercharged version. And there's one more thing. Right in here, we've got a supersonic nozzle, something that controls the flow. It's like an hourglass in there, and it controls the flow of the air. So it really makes it go really fast. OK, you've been saying the word supersonic quite a lot. I what have. is supersonic? It's probably Oasis's best single, in my opinion. Supersonic is when something goes over 1,200 kilometres an hour. And we're going to get that ping pong ball to go well over that speed. And what can we expect when we've got a ping pong ball going <laughs> at a supersonic speed? It's going to break the sound barrier. That's the first thing you're going to hear. So we had a bit of a bang before. This is going to be a lot louder. OK, so bigger contraption, yep. bigger bang. Bigger bang. Let's yep. do this. All right. First of all, I've got to put this ping pong ball down this end and just make sure, make sure that it doesn't fly out of that end for me. I'm going to blow down here. 
There we go. Right, that's down the end. So the ball is loaded. The ball is loaded. Right, I'm going to put some sticky tape on this end to make sure that we've got it nice and closed for when we put the vacuum pump on. So that end is now airtight. Hopefully so, yeah. Okay. We'll soon find out. <laughs> we do exactly the same down this end. Okay, cool. So I've got this washer just to put over the end. Right. And what's that washer going to do? It's going to make a real good seal between the compressed air and the vacuum. Okay. So we don't want it going off too early. Right. So what kind of targets are we going to be hitting today then? Who knows with Mike in charge? First of all, right. the table tennis bat. Right. We'll see what goes with that. Put your safety glasses on. Okay. Ah, that old chestnut. And we'll start evacuating the air from this tube. OK, so right now you are using this to draw out all of the atmosphere that's in this all tube. All of the air inside there, yeah. All of yeah. the air that's in here. I think the vacuum's pretty much there now. Right. Right, let's go right, over there. Right. I'm going to let you fire it. OK. All you have to do is release that valve. The pressure will rush into there. As soon as that sticky tape breaks, that's when it's going to fire that air all the way through the supersonic nozzle, okay. out into the ping pong ball. Nothing's going to stand in its way because it's got the vacuum in front of it, firing straight at that bat. You go for it. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I think we destroyed it. Yeah. So have a look. <laughs> that was one big bang. <laughs> That's crazy. That, bat. that made a massive bang. <laughs> And... <laughs> <laughs> Look at it's the imprint of... Uh, there you go. Is that the ping pong ball there? There's the ball, crushed it's up to nothing. A little bit worse for wear there, because there's only a half of it left. It's safe to say that no-one's going to return that serve. It's <laughs> no. done. Um, what's the next target? Right, pig skin. I figured if we fire at pig skin, we'll see whether it could break human skin. Hmm, nothing disturbing about that, Mike. Oh! Whoa! I don't know what happened. There's the ball. <laughs> I don't think it went through. Mike has just invented pig pong. What a shot. So that made a heck of a noise. <laughs> and ruined the ball. But it's not got through the pig skin. It hasn't. So I don't think it would be fatal. Probably just as well, eh, Mike? But damn, that would hurt. Well, I'll tell you what, Mike, that was a sick sports hack. Thank you. I mean, it was pretty impressive. The power of nothingness propels that ping pong ball at supersonic speeds. Great. I didn't even use gunpowder. Yeah, I know, for once. <laughs> for once, yeah. It broke the speed of sound. But it really was so much powerful than the last one, wasn't it? Yeah, it definitely was. I reckon we could get ourselves some gold medals if we took that down to the tennis court. We should give it a go. One thing's for sure, nobody would dare heckle you. That's full time on our sports episode, I'm afraid. We'll be back soon with more hacks to help you win at life. In the meantime, game on!